Okay, question number three from Pure Mathematics 3, P3 specimen paper from um, the International A level. Okay, this is, I'm recording this uh, before any P3 papers have been produced. Okay, so this is a, the specimen paper. I've already gone through the sample assessment paper. This is the specimen paper. Now, it tells us that guinea pigs and rabbits were introduced onto an island at the same time. Okay, the number of guinea pigs, G, T months after they were introduced onto the island is modeled by the equation G equals A plus 60 times E to the power of minus 0.05 T, where A is a positive constant. And E, of course, is the natural number. The number of rabbits are T months after they were introduced onto the island is modeled by the equation R equals 100 plus 80 times E to the power of 0.05 T. Okay, given that there were twice as many guinea pigs as rabbits introduced onto the island. So find the value of A. So first of all, when they were introduced onto the island, okay, they were introduced at the same time. So we can say that's the time when T equals zero because T is um, the number of months after they were introduced onto the island. So when T is zero, that's when, that's when they were first introduced onto the island. Okay, now it says there were twice as many guinea pigs as rabbits introduced onto the island. So the number of guinea pigs you can say is g the number of rabbits okay is going to be twice g okay the number of rabbits is equal to there's twice as many given sorry the number of guinea pigs is equal to twice the number of rabbits okay because the number of guinea pigs is more than the number of rabbits there are twice as many guinea pigs so the number of guinea pigs is equal to two times the number of rabbits okay so g is equal to 2r all right Okay, twice as many guinea pigs, so there's more guinea pigs. So to make them equal, you've got to multiply the number of rabbits by two, then they'll be equal. Okay, so if you get confused by that, sometimes that can be confusing. Anyway, so now when t equals zero, these are both equal to each other. So when t equals zero, you've got g is going to be a plus 60 times e to the power of minus, well, basically zero, because you're going to have a zero here. Okay, let me just put, the, put it in so you can show that you've put the right steps in. So that's minus 0 0.05 times zero equals two times 100 plus 80 times e to the power of 0 0.05 times zero. Okay, so this is e to the power of zero, which is one. So you have a plus 60 is equal to two times, and this is 100 plus, and this is 80, because this is e to the power of 0 as well, which is 1. So that's 100 plus 80. So we can say A is equal to um, 200 times, sorry, 2 times 180, which is 360. So 2 times 180, which is 360, minus 60. So A is equal to 300. So the constant A in this formula here is 300 so a is equal to 300 okay so there's the answer to part a of this question all right so part b of the question is on the next page I'll, I'll put it on the next page when t equals t the number of rabbits on the island is equal to the number of guinea pigs let me just get the information here first okay so i have got the information that we need that, that that's the formula for the number of guinea pigs that's the formula for the number of rabbits and that's the value of A we found in part A. So it says when the time is capital T, the number of rabbits on the island is equal to the number of guinea pigs on the island. Using these models, find the value of T, giving your answer to one decimal place. Okay, so we have to basically equate these two together. Now we know A is 300, so we can say that the number of guinea pigs has to equal the number of rabbits. So we can say that 100, no sorry, 300, which is A, plus 60 times e to the power of negative 0.05t is equal to r, which is 100, plus 80 times e to the power of 0.05t. Okay, so now, if I simplify this a little bit, um, what I'm going to do is, I'll write this as 300. Okay, first of all, in fact, what I'll do is I will subtract 100 from both sides just to get rid of that constant so 300 minus 100 is 200 so i have 200 plus and i'll write this as 60 
over e to the power of minus 0.05t and I'm left on this side with at times e to the power of 0.05t. Sorry, what did I do there? Silly mistake. When I write that as a denominator, it's going to lose its minus sign. Of course, that's why I did it. Okay, so e to the power of minus 0.05t is the same as 1 over e to the power of 0.05t. The negative sign means it's the reciprocal of it. Okay, all right. Now, what I'm going to do now is just to make this look less complicated, I'm going to say let a letter, for example, x equals e to the power of 0.05t. So I'll replace this with x. So I have 200 plus 60 over x equals 80x. Now this looks like a equation that we can solve. In fact, it looks like a quadratic equation because if I multiply both sides of this equation by x, okay, the denominator will disappear and I'll have 200 x plus 60 equals 80x squared. So if I rearrange everything to uh, bring everything on one side with the x squared as positive, I'll have 80x squared minus 200 minus 60 equals 0. So I can just write that the other way around. But I can also get rid of divide by 10, so I can get rid of these um, zeros. And then I can divide by 2. So I've got 4x squared minus 10 sorry there's an x there minus 10x and minus if i divide by 2 that's 4x squared minus 10x minus 3 is equal to 0. okay now we have to solve this quadratic equation now we could try to do it by factorizing we could try to do it by completing the square we could try to do it by using the quadratic formula um, I think factorizing might not work. Got to find two numbers that multiply to give you negative 12x squared, 4x squared and minus 3. And they add to give you minus 10. So you've got uh, 12, 4 and 3, no. You've got 5 and, uh, sorry, you've got 6 and 2, no. Uh, and you've got uh, 12 and 1, no. Okay, so you can't factorize this. This won't factorize, so you won't be able to factorize you can use completing the square you can use the quadratic formula there's in fact even a new method that's been developed by somebody which i'll go into maybe in another video um it's just recently been you know widely publicized which is a, a new kind of method to answer any uh, quadratic equation whether it can be factorized or not you can get the answer quite kind of simply anyway let me just go by a traditional method okay now most of you would probably go for the quadratic formula which is perfectly fine, but I'm just going to, for the sake of practicing, uh, go through completing the square. Okay. Now, to complete the square for something like this, when you have an equation, the first thing you do is you want to have it as saying x squared. So I want to get rid of this 4. So I'm going to divide the whole thing by 4. So I'll have x squared minus 10 over 4, which is 5 over 2, x minus 3 over 4. And of course, this will be 0 still because divide anything by zero or anything you're going to get um, zero now we're going to complete the square for what's inside or for the x terms so i'm going to let me before we do that let me get rid of that minus three quarters as well so we have x squared minus five over two x equals three quarters now i can just focus on completing the square on this side so i'm going to have a square bracket which is going to be like that and there's a minus sign so i have to write minus i have to do a half of the coefficient of 5 over 2 so a half times 5 over 2 is 5 over 4 then i subtract from this square bracket the square of this number which is 25 over 16 and that's equal to 3 over 4 which i'm going to get it ready by putting it over 16 so times 4 times 4 3 times 4 is 12 that's like 12 over 16 and now i can add the 25 over 16 to both sides so I have x minus 5 over 4 squared is equal to 12 plus 25 is going to be 37 over 16. So now I can take the square root of both sides. So x minus 5 over 4 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 37. Uh, whoops, 37, not 32. 37. Let me just make some space. Okay, plus or minus 37 over 4 
because the square root of 16 is 4. So I'm not supposed to do this, but I'll just do this anyway, just for the sake of space. Um, so x equals 5 over 4 plus or minus the square root of 37 over 4. So I'll just write that as one denominator. I'll write that as one denominator. Okay, so x equals 5 plus root, root 37 over 4. That's the value of plus or minus, yes? Okay, now... Um, yeah, that's right. 5 minus... Okay, good. Yeah, so that's the answer. Now, just in case you're doubting, you should really check by putting this into your equation. And this is where using the uh, functions of your calculator where you can solve. So here, the, I've got quadratics, so I'm going to press 3. The new calculator is slightly different, but anyway, you can put 4 and equals. 4, that's your A value. Your B value is your minus 10. So put minus 10 press equals, your C value is minus 3, press equals, press equals again, it gives you the solution. So 5 plus root 37 over 4 and 5 minus root 37 over 4. So those are the two solutions. So just as a check to make sure that you're on the right tracks, it's a good idea to use your calculator. But if you don't show any steps, you will lose marks. Okay, so now, um, let's, we should have kept that actually. So let's see what 5 minus root 37 that's bigger that that's actually going to be negative so because um you've got e to the power of minus zero sorry remember we said x is actually x is e to the power of 0 0.05 t that's what we said okay so x is there yeah. so now um we can say that e to the power of 0 0.05 t, and this is now when t is equal to t, I should have put that in the beginning actually, capital T, okay, is equal to 5 plus root 37 over 4, and 5 minus root 37 over 4. Now 5 minus root 37 over 4 is equal to something which is negative, and e to the power of something can never be negative. Okay, because the E curve, the, the exponential curve goes like this. It never goes below the, the, uh, the x-axis. Okay, so we're only choosing the positive version of this answer. Let me just write it a bit neater before I, it becomes a completely different number in our steps. So 5 plus root 37 over 4. So now I've got to solve this exponential equation. So I'm going to take the lin to the base E of both sides. Sorry, to the log to the base E, which is lin of both sides, which gives you 0 0.05 t equals the lin of 5 plus root 37 over 4. So t is equal to, basically this is like uh, 5 over 100, which is 1 over 20. So it's 20 times lin of 5 plus root 37 all over 4. Okay, I multiply both sides by 20 because this is 1 over 20. Okay, so you end up with your answer being so 20 times lin bracket oops, I already has a bracket there fraction 5 plus root 37 over 4 okay which gives you 20.381 so that's 20.381 okay and that is um, one decimal place so you can say 20.4 so 20.4 and I think it was in months, wasn't it? So 20.4 months. Well, we don't, we don't have to write the months, actually, because T is defined as being in months. Okay. Um, all right. So basically, one of the things that I should have done here, uh, really, is at this stage, I should have made this a capital T, because it's when uh, T is equal to T, 
when t when small t is equal to t that's when g is equal to r so i should have made all of these capital t's all right that's one of the things i should have done really okay looks a bit messy now i would uh, cross it out so at that point at that, those stages there, i should have made that capital t i think i did at the end here yeah that's right okay so that's the only little point because it's when t is equal to capital t that's when g is equal to r okay that's what it says here all right so that's the answer to that part b and now on to part c oh there's no part c that's the end of the question okay so there we have it that's the, that's the answer to that question okay Thank you for watching.